when schools took the Ten Commandments off its walls, what followed was the same generation was the rebellion in many of the courts against these commandments, yet crime has only increased. As the Ten Commandments are deemed old in our society, our constitutional rights and the Second Amendment are deemed as old and gun carriers suspicious as potential threats. Meanwhile, abortion is almost celebrated and our taxpayers are paying for it. We're calling terrorist freedom fighters and sending military weapons to some of them. Added to this is the Ten Commandments for the New World Order, which calls for the elimination of most of civilization. My guest is Pastor Dave Sumner of Rehoboth Messianic Congregation in Vancouver, Washington, and we'll be talking about commandment number six. If anybody recognizes you and they watch, um, you know, some of the... Um, you stream, we, you stream our services. You, you, you stream your services, and where can they find you? They can find us at Rehoboth-Messianic.org. Okay. And also Sid Roth. You're on this uh, Sid Roth, um, the commercial. That's yeah. right. That introductory commercial to Sid Roth. Years ago, they asked yeah. me to say something in Hebrew. So, Ladam Chadash Echad, one new man. Um, you know, when I see you on Sid Roth, I'm like, yeah, I need to, you know, he's, he's the right guy to talk about this because when we talk about murder, it's more than just meets the eye. Um, it, there's a biblical history um, that um, most people, if they're not super learned in the Old Testament, and I'll just say it that because that's, oh, that's what people fine. Sure. understand that. Of they, course. They, um, they're not really going to get it. And so I kind of want to um, get your take on that. Um, let's, let's just start with uh, Cain and Abel and, um, yeah. and, and how really blood. Here's the thing that's interesting. and it's, it's, It seems like in the Bible it's always about the blood, um, whether it's through Jesus, Yeshua, or um, yeah. the beginning. So. Yeah. Cain, of course, being the firstborn after the fall, Mm-hmm. He had it all, if you think about it. All of earth was his inheritance until Abel came along. Mm-hmm. And now you have someone that he perhaps has to share with, whatever. But I do recall that some people don't read the scripture quite correctly. It said Cain was rejected and his sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Abel was accepted and his sacrifice. Mm-hmm. They leave that huge word out and they Mm -hmm. think, well, it's all about his sacrifice. God looks at the heart. He rejects what the world does or someone that doesn't do it with the right motives. Mm -hmm. We know he didn't combine it with faith, as we're told later on. Mm -hmm. But um, that's why it's so nice to have that New Testament, Mm -hmm. the Brit Hadashah, we say. We can learn about these things. And it said he didn't have faith. Uh Where Abel offered up, of course, animal. Uh-huh. his sheep and that and it was accepted but Abel was first accepted then his sacrifice mm-hmm. and so I tell people also this Veronica is that you know some of the oldest fights in the world in fact the first fight is family fights some people say oh my family I've got so many problems <laughs> look at the whole Bible family disagreements so that first killing was family Mm. As Cain is after, you know, the whole entire blessing, um, Satan is after the blessing. And, and you see this kind of repeatedly, well, totally repeatedly throughout the scripture where, um, you know, he's after Jerusalem. And today we see Satan after Jerusalem. And um, sure. people it, don't really understand that. And the blood sacrifice that um, is uh, somehow required in darkness to make make the move. Can you explain that? Well, there's only one city in the world that God said it's my city. Yeah. And that's Jerusalem. I know. <laughs> Yerushalayim. Okay, Jerusalem. That's, that's and, the only and the city Lord he's said, asked. Right. He, and though we like the Northwest, it wasn't Portland or Vancouver. Or what, <laughs> he said Jerusalem is my city. And Satan, Satan we call him, Satan means enmity, to come against us. Mm-hmm. He's always coming against God. Whatever God says, he tries to destroy. Uh, That's his nature. There is no truth in him. Mm -hmm. And so when people want to destroy Jerusalem, and there is a hatred that the world, because why else would the world gather against what city? Yeah, Jerusalem. I know. Totally prophesied in the Bible. Whatever God says, 
the enemy tries to destroy. If he yeah. says that these are the commandments, mm-hmm. uh, then he will try to make man to be God. Mm-hmm. It's an old trick of man. And this is an old trick, or I should say not of man, but of, of Satan. This is the trick. You should be like God. And people say, well, what does that mean? Well, do I get smart? No. Understand this, Veronica. And listeners, <laughs> and this is so important. God decides what is right and wrong. This is not our decision. He has the right to say this is wrong and this is right. Mm -hmm. When we switch that, Mm -hmm. then we feel that we are now God, for we have the right to decide what is right Mm -hmm. and what is wrong. Absorbing his authority. As a matter of fact, since you brought that up, I do want to bring up these books, and they've been in my other shows when we've talked about the other various commandments. Oh. But these are law books, um, criminal law, different different laws um, that we have formed in the United States. And it has taken over the authority, unfortunately, in our nation of the Ten Commandments. Now, here we have Ten, uh, ten Commandments, Ten Laws. Um, a lot easier, and I, 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 I guess I, I've heard that um, there's 613 commandments of which only about, only about three of them you keep until there's a temple. Um, so let's say, let's just say roughly 300 commandments. Is that fair? Or Many know? of them pertain to Israel. Mm-hmm. Many of them pertain to the temple. Okay. And so um, would, would you say three of them we could use in our country instead and get rid of these? Oh, well, I could say, say that? Yeah, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> uh, we can boil it down to one law. Love, love the Lord, two of them. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, right? Mm-hmm. And with all your soul and all your might. Mm-hmm. But he also, Yeshua, Jesus, added another one that's important. Love your neighbor as yourself. Mm-hmm. When we do that... Mm-hmm. This represents what this is trying to do. Yeah. I don't mind if someone tries to restate it in common terms. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, breaking the law, doing 90 and a 25 or something, you know. Because they're doing it for the safety of people. Mm -hmm. They're doing it for the good of people. But when we try to revalue what God said is right, Mm -hmm. that's where we get in trouble. Yeah. If he called, if he said, thou shalt not murder then people have a lot of excuses. Understand this. I don't know if I should take it this way, but they're called the Ten Sayings or the Ten Commandments of God. And I like to look at it this way. Ten is important. It means accountability Mm -hmm. if you want to look at numbers and stuff. Mm -hmm. He gave you ten fingers. Mm -hmm. All right? You are accountable for what your hands do. Mm -hmm. Okay? Man doesn't want to be held accountable for what they do. If you take a look at it, people will murder and then hire attorney or whatever to try and get them out of that. Man will do things with their hands and say, well, let's go back to Cain. You know, when God says about your brother and cast judgment on him, you know what Cain said? It's too hard on me. Hmm. Well, wait a minute. (laughs) He didn't even mention he killed his brother. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that like people that will do that? They will break the commandments and they there are ten fingers by the way you have ten toes too yeah, yeah. you're accountable for what your feet do how beautiful are the feet of him who brings good news right yeah because you are see uh-huh. god did that uh-huh. god put ten days between rosh hashanah that's the jewish new year and yom kippur the day of atonement when you stand before god ten why so that mm-hmm. you can prepare yourself and be held accountable yeah yeah and I want to I want to get to the video. Okay. And the uh, it seems like in the '60s. I know yeah. it started before then when communism started, you know, coming into our nation. Um, yes. You know, but it was very small. And then in the '60s, with the weather underground and the um, you know, there's there's a lot of things that happened. You know, as you know, but mm-hmm. one of the things that happened was they took prayer out of uh, schools. And I I forgot to bring my chart out, but um, there's been a really um, a huge assault since 1962. They took prayer out of school. So I want to show um, what else happened um, in the 1960s. And we're going to watch this video and then we'll come right back.
brought up the subject of what's going to happen after we take over the government. Uh, you know, we we become responsible then for administrating, you know, 250 million people. And there was no answers. No one had given any thought to economics. How are you going to clothe and feed these people? The only thing that I could get was that they expected that the Cubans and the North Vietnamese and the Chinese and the Russians would all want to occupy different portions of the United States. They also believed that their immediate responsibility would be to protect against what they called the counter-revolution. And uh, they felt that this counter-revolution could best be guarded against by creating and establishing re-education centers in the Southwest uh, where we would take all the people who needed to be re-educated into the new way of thinking and teach them how things were going to be. I ask, well, what is going to happen to those people that we can't re-educate, that are die-hard cap capitalists? And the reply was that they'd have to be eliminated. And when I pursued this further, they estimated that they would have to eliminate 25 million people in these re-education centers. And when I say eliminate, I mean kill 25 million people. I want you to imagine sitting in a room with 25 people, most of which have graduate degrees from Columbia and other well-known educational centers, and hear them figuring out the logistics for the elimination of 25 million people. And they were dead serious.